Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing Milan's The Pragmatic Architecture course, which has predominantly been designed for .NET engineers. So before we get started, I thought I'd just give it a little introduction into who Milan is. Milan is a software architect who's been in the industry, I think, for eight years now, for sort of a very similar amount of time that I've been in the industry, but he specialises in .NET and the architecture of .NET solutions. And so one thing that I really, really like about Milan and his approach to teaching other people is that he isn't greedy with his knowledge. He has things on YouTube, he has things on LinkedIn, and he has things on his weekly newsletter that he also provides. And it's all about giving a lot of information. That, and I really, really respect that as someone who is starting to get into content creation myself, because I think the best way to teach other people is to give as much knowledge as you've got in your head, onto paper, onto, onto videos, as much as you can. And Milan is a perfect embodiment of that. And so another thing I just want to say before we get started is that I haven't been paid to say this. I haven't been paid to do his course. I did it myself. I purchased it myself because I genuinely wanted to learn what Milhan had to say. And I really, really respect him and his work as a .NET developer myself. And so without further ado, let's get into it. So I first want to talk about what I deem the best parts of the course. So we'll start first talking about the cost of the course. When I purchased it, I believe I purchased it for $149. That might not be correct. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was somewhere around that figure. And it's now re retailing for $247. And the reason why is because I got it when it was on special offer, because he's added a few more hours of content onto this particular course to his previous course that he had and what does that give you it gives you i think it's around seven hours of content that milhan provides as well as templates for his clean architecture for the testing for the cicd pipeline and for the postman collections as well so actually i think that's really really good because you get to reference those things time and time again for projects that you're using and you get to reuse the clean architecture templates that he's provided and i think that's personally quite valuable especially for people who are starting out and not quite familiar on how to get it set up themselves another thing i really really liked about the course was how well detailed the domain driven design aspect was just explained i think Milhan gives a really good overview of the various layers that go into domain driven design and what they are used for which is something that when I first started learning about domain driven design a few years ago really really confused me and I think he explains it quite clearly and so I thought that it was delivered really really well. We're now moving on to my favourite part of the course which was the command query responsibility segregation that is using Mediator. I really, really like the way that this is done. I think it's a really, really clean way to design and architect .NET code. And if you haven't used it before and you have used different systems, you'll really, really gain an appreciation for the way that this is done because it is really, really nice and um, loosely coupled. And the way that things move around the system is, is done without having to affect that part of the system. And so I really, really like it and I have been, to be honest, I have been using it before, but like the way that Milhan delivers it is a lot better than in some places that I've seen. And actually you kind of realise like some of the questions that you have when you work in work in different companies that use it, but don't necessarily use it to the best of their abilities. I feel were answered by the way that Milhan architects his code. I also really like that instead of using um, like an iEquatable object, an iEquatable interface with a class object for his value objects, he just use records. I think that's a really, really pragmatic approach. And I actually really enjoyed that. I think personally, I find that is enough. And I, I personally find the other way of generally writing value objects in C-sharp that I've seen overly complex in my opinion. 
I did find the domain event publishing pattern really, really, really neat. I think that is a really good way of sending events around your system without it affecting the current domain that you are in. And then the other parts of the system can then do what they, they want to with that particular event. And so when later on in the course, Milhan uses the outbox pattern. I thought that was really, really good because it was a nice way of basically decoupling the code and creating um, and removing that single point of failure that was happening before. I actually wish that I knew about the way that he'd done this in a couple months back because I implemented something very similar but not as neat and not as clean in my opinion. It didn't have the same... The thing that I implemented basically searched on a particular table rather than an, a separate outbox table and then sent off um, any any messages that were in currently a specific status, whereas Milhan um, creates a specific table for dealing with outbox messages and I thought that was really, really nice. I really, really like the use of results slash error pattern that he uses. I've used this before and I think it's really, really, um, I've used this I've used this before and actually I think it's much better than having to throw exceptions everywhere. What I would think would be a good example in future iterations of this course would be to see how it looked before versus how it looks now because when you've been in a code base where there are loads of exceptions been thrown around you actually gain a big appreciation for writing code in this way and for seeing how, how clean it looks and so I definitely definitely recommend using this but have an appreciation for why what the alternative is and why you would typically write things in this way. Milan goes on to use middlewares and behaviours and I think these are kind of some of the fundamentals of using object oriented programming that you can kind of that you can abstract things away and only focus on your domain logic. So Anything that's cross-cutting, you can see if there's a library for that. I would recommend you just make sure that you vet those libraries and just make sure that you're happy with them. But it's a really, really good way of, of using um, .NET to the best of its ability. The additional information, such as using Serilog, Health Check, API versioning and the Outbox pattern was really, really valuable. I've personally used a lot of these before, but if you haven't used them, I definitely recommend that you do because they are like industry standard and do help you get your code more manageable in production, for example. One thing that I really enjoyed about the course is when Milan did refactoring of specific areas. I think the refactoring was a really, really good way to showcase why something is is better. And I think if Milan did that a little bit more in further courses, I think that would be really valuable. For example, when he refactored the domain event pattern to use the outbox pattern, I thought that was really, really good and really, really good to see how he did that. Now, it wouldn't be a review if I didn't have things that I think you should consider. And so the first thing I'm going to say is just if you are a newbie to .NET development, I really, really would encourage you to learn a little bit more about .NET and EFCore before doing this course, because some of the things won't really make sense to you if you can't easily navigate around .NET. It really is for developers who have that experience. And I would say like, late junior, mid develop, mid, mid engineer, they're, they're pr the predominant target audience. Just make sure you have those core skills of .NET before delving into writing it in a clean way. I think Milhan does mention this when he says about the course, just to say, you know, it is targeted at people who have .NET experience already. Throughout the course, there were a few, few patterns that were explained that wasn't necessarily um, delved into very much and so for example there was unit of work and repository pattern and I'm quite familiar with that pattern myself but if I was a .NET developer with a couple of years experience I might not necessarily be and so I think it's just important to make sure if there are any patterns that Milhen has gone through that you're not quite familiar with just to have a look and see why they're used 
And for Milhan, it would be great if he could add this to his future classes just to say, this is what the repository pattern is and the unit work pattern is. This is why you would use it and just give a little bit of a brief overview before jumping straight into the code base. If you are still early on in your career, I definitely recommend that you write your tests alongside rather than all at once like Milhan does in the one section. I think Milhan did this because it is um, just a, a tutorial, but really in real life, I would anticipate you to do it whenever you change functionality or add new functionality. And that just helps you maintain that a little bit better. Milan also is an architect, so that does help with being able to kind of architect the system and then write the test all at once. Whereas if you are learning, then that can be sometimes harder to do. So definitely do it alongside. Another thing with regards to testing was that there wasn't any tests for the infrastructure project. So I would say there was a bit of business logic in the infrastructure project that I would typically be testing just to verify that they are done properly. So I would also add an infrastructure tests folder to test that too. Another thing would be I wouldn't necessarily look to implement Dapper unless I was having performance issues with the EF core. And that's just because I personally find that EF core is pretty fast and only really need performance improvements because of different things such as people using for loops or using or having bad database design for example so there are a lot of other things that contribute to slow queries than EF core itself and so I would only really be looking to implement Dapper if I could prove that EF was the reason for the slowness. The reason why is really just because adding another ORM adds complexity to your solution, which you don't need if there's no performance issues. But, you know, depending on your solution will depend on what you do with that. The final thing I just want to touch upon is that there were a lot of libraries that we use. I definitely would encourage you to vet any libraries that you do use and just make sure that your company are happy with them and that they don't have any vulnerabilities that affect your company specifically. Anytime you introduce a library, you are introducing maintenance and technical debt because you have to then make you have to then make sure that that library stays supported. If there's any vulnerabilities that have gone into that library, you have to make sure that you as a company are maintaining them. And so just be aware, just to ensure you really, really check: Do I need this library? Why do I need it? And then only adding it if, if the things that it gives you save you the time that you believe that you need to save. So final thoughts is that I really, really enjoyed Milan's course and I learned a lot from it. I'm really, really excited to continue using some of the practices that I've learned from his course in things going forward. I definitely recommend this course for people who are wanting to upskill in their .NET. And I thought Milhan delivered it really, really well. So thank you, Milhan, for for taking the time to do this course and for teaching me to be a better developer. And that's all from me. If you like this video, please can you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post weekly content on my YouTube and on my blog, and I also post daily content on my LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and see you next week.